shake his head. Good morning and welcome to People of Hope Church. Uh, my name is Mike Temple. I'm your worship, one of the volunteer worship leaders here. It's great to have you with us. Uh, we're going to, all the words you're going to need are going to be on the screen, either here in the service or on your wonderful device at home. And let's join together in uh, the next slide here in recognizing the First Nation Native Americans who originally settled this land, specifically the Wapatanwan Nation. Let's read this together. People of Hope is located on the original and ancestral homelands of the Wapatawan peoples. And we give thanks for their presence here since time immemorial. We also wish to recognize and honor all our indigenous siblings who have and continue to call this land their home. All right, let's uh, join in singing our first songs together. Lord, 
All right. Thank you and welcome again. It's great to have you here and worship at People of Hope. It's wonderful to have you with us. I'm Mike Temple. I'm one of the volunteer worship leaders here. And the most important message of the day to know is that God loves you. God loves us all, and God loves you especially. It's wonderful to have that good feeling and know that. If you're a visitor, we wish to welcome you today. It's great to have you here with us. We'll be celebrating communion together later in the service. Uh, if you're at home, take time to collect your communion ele elements, uh, like wine and bread or whatever you have handy. If you're here in worship, Pastor Dan will have instructions later. For prayer requests, if you're watching from online, please enter your uh, request in the comment area of the Facebook live feed, and we'll read them later on. If you're present here, we have purple prayer cards in the back on that little table, and uh, we'll collect those um, in about 30 minutes or so as we go into the service. This is how we raise up our joys and concerns as a community with each other, how we share our joys, our concerns, and as we pray as a community for each other and with each other. Let's center ourselves for worship now. Close your eyes and relax. Take a deep breath. Let your worries flow out as you exhale. Lord, bless this time of worship and renewal. Open our minds and hearts to hear your word anew, Lord. Be with everyone in worship this morning. Amen. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are here with us now and care for all of us. Let's next join in our confessional song and then prayer. Let's sing to together. Someone shouting from the desert. Someone shouting from the Someone shouting from the mountain, someone shouting from the God loves you, the most important message of the day. We all strive for goodness, sometimes we fall short. Let's read this confessional prayer together. God of all creation, you are great above all. You created everything. You are our breath and life. Give us ears to hear, even when it is difficult to hear or understand you. Forgive us for, for not listening to ourselves, to, ourselves, to those around us, and most importantly, to you. Help us to forgive the ones we feel wronged by, and move us to be agents of change, unsatisfied with an unjust world. Remind us of your love again and again. Ignite us to be your loving and faithful presence in the world. For you are the, are the ultimate, ultimate giver of all good things. things. Amen. Amen. 
Remember that you are loved, you are forgiven. Hear these words of forgiveness. God hears us, we are forgiven. God's love is like the sun. No matter how lost we are in the night, day after day, the light will find you. Rest easy, you are held in God's warmth. Amen. Someone shouting, I am broken. Someone shouting, make me whole. Someone shouting, come and change me. Someone shouting, save my soul. Yes, time acapella here we go miss our first bible verse today is from the book of isaiah the reading is from the message it's isaiah 58 if you get rid of unfair practices, quit blaming victims. Quit gossiping about each other's sins. If you are generous with the hungry and start giving yourselves to the down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness and your shadowed lives will be bathed in sunlight. I will always show you where to go. I give you, I'll give you a full life in the emptiest places firm muscles, strong bones. You'll be like a well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never runs dry. You'll use the old rubble of past lives to build anew, rebuild the foundations from out of your past. You'll be known as those who can fix anything, restore old ruins, rebuild and renovate, make the community livable again. If you watch your step on the Sabbath and don't use my holy day for personal advantage, if you treat the Sabbath as a day of joy, God's holy day as a celebration, if you honor it by refusing business as usual, making money, running here and there, then you'll be free to enjoy God. Oh, I'll make you ride high and soar above it all. I'll make you feast on the inheritance of your ancestor Jacob. Yes, God says so. Our next uh, Bible verse is from Luke 13, again from the message. He, Jesus, was teaching in one of the meeting places on the Sabbath, and there was a woman present, so twisted and bent over from arthritis that she couldn't even look up. She had been afflicted with this for 18 years. When Jesus saw her, he called her over. Woman, you're free. And he laid hands on her. And suddenly she was standing straight and tall, giving glory to God. The meeting place president, furious because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the congregation, six days have been defined as work days. Come on one of the six if you want to be healed. Do not come on the seventh, the Sabbath. And Jesus shot back, you frauds, each Sabbath, every one of you regularly unties your cow or donkey from its stall, leads it out for water, and thinks nothing of it. So why isn't it all right for me to untie this daughter of Abraham and send her from the stall where Satan has had her tied these 18 years? And when he put it that way, his critics were left looking quite silly and red-faced. 
the congregation was delighted and cheered him on. And now, young missionaries time. Yeah. Young member missionaries to come forward, and you can sit in this front row if you want to. It's so great to see you all here today, so come on up. It's all right, don't be shy. I'm a nice guy 99.9% of the time I am. So why don't you have a seat right over here? It's good to see you guys. How are you doing? Good. How many of you are excited for the start of the school year? Raise your hand. Look at this. All of them. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So I'm excited for the start of the school year too. And I was especially excited for the start of the school year when Tucker was more like your age. Now, it's, it's whatever it is, right? Tucker's so busy with everything else, but I love the start of the school year when Tucker was your age because that meant that he was going to reunite with some friends that he hadn't seen for all summer long. How many of you have friends at school that you haven't seen this summer, right? Some of you do, right? Now, I remember when Tucker was, was a little guy and he would invite friends over to our house to play we'd always have to have a discussion beforehand. Tucker would invite friends over and Tucker would want to do what Tucker wanted to do with his friends. No matter if they wanted to do it or not, Tucker might want to have a Nerf gun war or play with Legos or play video games and he never asked his friends what they wanted to do. Do you think that's right? No, Riker, why, why isn't that right? Right, right. When your friends come over, you should let them decide what they might want to do and might want to play, and you should be the host, right? Now, you might be saying, Pastor Dan, that's great, but why are you talking about that today? Well, today in one of our Bible stories, Jesus is teaching in a place of worship, like one of these places, and someone comes forward who has been really, really hurt for a long time, a long, long time, longer than any of you have been born, and, and she's really hurt. She's hunched over because she has arthritis. And he, Jesus heals her. And someone from the congregation says, Hold on, Jesus. You need to be doing what we want you to do on this day, not what she wants you to do on this day. And Jesus gets upset. And Jesus reminds the folks that sometimes as being a, a hospitable host, especially someone who is hurt, you need to take a step back and we need to attend to the, this person's needs. We need to do what, what this person needs us to do. And I think that's a great reminder for us as people who follow Jesus, right? We all have things that we want to do and, and we have things that we want to play. We have things that are very, very important to us. But what it means to be a follower of Christ is that sometimes we have to put those things aside to meet the needs of someone else. All right, so today we're going to say a prayer to ask God to help us have that mindset in our lives, okay? So I'm going to pray, and I ask that you pray after me, okay? So let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for this day and for these people. Help to remind us to serve other people even when it is something that we might not want to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, you can go back to your seats, but I want to high-five as you go along. I promise I have clean hands. Thank you. Oh, thanks, buddy. God makes peace within us. God makes peace between us. The peace of God is here to stay. I invite you to please stand as you're able to share a sign of God's love and peace with one another. Those of you who are watching online, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace, Joanne. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. The church is dying. The church is dying. Now, I don't say those words lightly, and I don't say that about our congregation. I say that about the church worldwide. And maybe, rather than saying that the church is dying, it's probably more apt to say that the church is declining. And all you need to do is pay attention to the church statistics, and that will tell you that. Especially statistics from our own denomination, the ELCA. We just had our, our church-wide assembly, and, and part of that church-wide assembly uh, was a discussion and a motion brought forward from uh, the assembly itself to revise the church, ELCA church-wide constitution. And that motion was brought forward because when the ELCA was founded, in about 1980 or so, there were over 5.5 members of the two, um, two Lutheran bodies that came together to form the ELCA. So in 1980, 5.5 million members. In 2021, the ELCA reported membership of 3.4 something million members. That's a decline of 2 million people in about three decades. Now, the ELCA is not alone in these numbers. Uh, the, the Christian church worldwide, except for some, some strong mission posts, especially South America and in Africa, is declining. The church is, is taking a less prominent role in society. Uh, the age of people who, who attend uh, church is going up. The involvement of baby boomers and generations after baby boomers is going down. Now, there's lots of reasons that people give for this decline. Uh, some of it is the busyness of our lives, especially the intrusion of sports and kids' activities on Sunday mornings. Uh, people give the excuse that, that church at one time was the social, uh, social center of communities, especially smaller communities, and now that there's other social things happening in those communities, the church has taken a back seat. People say that the church has a less predominant place because of the scandals that have happened throughout, uh, throughout the history of the Christian church, especially in the last couple of decades. There's lots and lots of excuses about why the church is in decline. Now, I don't mean to be Danny Downer on this Sunday. So, because I don't want to be Dan Danny Downer, I want to look at Scripture and how Scripture might address what be might be happening in our current situation and what Jesus might say about how we might be able to reverse that trend. And I was so grateful after hearing all these statistics the past couple of weeks while watching some of the ELCA churchwide assembly, that this is the scripture passage that came up. The scripture passage uh, from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. It's a story about Jesus teaching in a religious meeting place or in a synagogue, right? And it's important to note that Jesus is teaching on the Sabbath. And that Jesus is teaching on the Sabbath because he is functioning as the role of a rabbi, a traditional, uh, traditional Jewish leader. And I say that's important because Jesus is Jewish. And this passage has been used to promote anti-Semitic thoughts in the world. And that's not what the point of the passage is at all. So imagine Jesus is standing up in front of this congregation teaching and, and doing what Jesus is doing. And all of a sudden, this woman walks into the congregation. This woman who has been inflicted by a terrible form of arthritis or a terrible affliction for 18 years. Now imagine this woman walking slowly from the back of the room to the front of the room because she's heard stories about this man named Jesus and she has learned that Jesus can do these miraculous healings and for 18 years because of this affliction she has felt like she's been on the outside of this worshiping community. People have walked past her and deemed her sick and unworthy and sinful because she has this physical affliction. 
And finally, on this day, this woman has enough courage to walk into this place that has rejected her over and over again because she sees and knows that there's a man in there who can provide her relief, who can restore her, who can give her a resurrection. And she comes forward, and Jesus sees her. And Jesus proclaims, woman, you are free. And in those words, Jesus restores this woman's health. And not only her health, but restores her place in society. Restores her place in this worshiping community. Restores her to a fullness of life where she doesn't have to fear about being rejected or being pushed aside, where she doesn't have to keep fearing this death in life that she's experiencing. A miracle has taken place. And you think that those people in the congregation would stand up and applaud. But no. A very faithful church person, the president of the congregation, instead stands up and says, this is not what we're about this morning. We can't be engaged in this type of work. We're commanded not to be working on the Sabbath, and healing is obviously a work. So don't do that. Don't bother coming forward on this day, this holy day, to be healed. There's six other days to do it. This day is holy. And Jesus hears the president of the congregation and gets angry. I love a little angry Jesus now and then, right? And Jesus essentially tells this person, you've missed the point. You have no idea what's going on. You have animals at home, right? You take care of those animals on this day. This precious child of God, how dare you say that we don't take care of her needs? How dare you say that she isn't worth healing on this day, in this place? How dare you? And the congregation hears Jesus, and we hear them applauding and doing all this kind of stuff, right? So here's what I want to talk about. We need to be a lot like Jesus in this story. We need to to recognize that most of the time when we come to worship, or when we come to our places of holy worship, we are pretty comfortable. We know what to expect. We know how things are done. We've chosen the places that we've come to worship because they meet our preferences, our needs, our desires. But Jesus, just as Jesus, we need to recognize that sometimes our preferences, our desires, our wants need to be put on the back burner so that we can reach those who have felt alienated and felt abandoned, and felt hurt, and persecuted by the church. We need to stop that inner critic voice saying, well, these ministries, they were once meant for me, and now they're meant for someone else, and I don't know if I'm okay with that. Because we need to stop those voices, because that's not what the gospel is about. The gospel is about Jesus loving everyone. It includes us, but it includes people different than us, and who, has, who have different preferences than us, and different experiences than us. You see, I think the church is in decline because we've been so focused on what we want, what we desire, what we think is important, that we've lost track of what Jesus deems important, and that what those who aren't in this place might want or desire. We've lost that evangelical part of our name. So what does this mean for the church? Or what does this mean for for us who follow Jesus? And what does this mean for our congregation? It means that we need to start 
listening to those who aren't here. We, it means that we need to go out into the community and say, how can we serve you? What do you need? How do you need to know what are things that we can do so that you know that you are loved and that, God, that you have a place with God? And we need to be open to the, the reality that when we get that input from those who aren't already in this place, that this place might change a little bit. And we need to recognize and we need to accept that we might need to be okay with that. Because as soon as we decide that we're not okay with that, the decline is going to happen a lot more rapidly than it is now. Now that doesn't mean that, we're gonna, that everything has to change holistically. It doesn't mean that we're going to throw everything away and start brand new. But it does mean that new things should and will be happening. To reach a population who needs to experience the freedom of following Jesus. So siblings in Christ, let us be courageous in our following of Jesus. Let us be willing to invite new folks into God's love by our proclamation, by our acts of service, by the ministry opportunities that we offer. And may we be willing to recognize that sometimes we might not get our own way, but that's okay if God is getting God's way. Let us be courageous, let us be brave, let us be profound in our preaching, and let us be willing to change and adapt so that everyone can know that they are loved and that they are free in the love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed. Shall sing of the day you bring.
together in the reading of the Apostles' Creed, our universal statement of faith that ties us all together with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We want to thank you for all you do inside People of Hope and outside of People of Hope with your offerings, your time, your talent, the treasures that you share. Um, there's many ways to give at People of Hope. There's a, a box at the back if you want to drop in a check. There is a text feature that you can text uh, money to, to People of Hope. Or there's the Simply Giving campaign where you sign up and uh, the money is automatically withdrawn. So thank you for your gift and your sharing. Uh, we're going to continue our, our time of worship uh, today with the prayers of the people. Um, we have prayer requests that have been submitted online, so I'm going to uh, uh, share those prayer requests, but also share prayer requests that are written on my heart and mind as well. Uh, at the end of every prayer petition, I'm going to say the words, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond to our prayer. If you're watching online, you can uh, follow up with those prayer requests by hitting one of the uh, emojis that are, are available to you on uh, Facebook Live. So let us pray together. Most holy and gracious God, we thank you for this day of grace. Uh, we thank you for bringing us here uh, together today uh, to worship and praise you. And God, as we gather as your collected uh, people, we have prayer requests that, that we have to offer to you. We know that you know our prayers even before we speak them, but speaking them aloud allows us to feel a deeper connection with you and with our community of faith. So we pray, pray these prayers now together. Uh, gracious God, uh, Mary prays, please be uh, with, with me during surgery tomorrow uh, and through her recovery. Continue to be with the entire Herbers family. May they surround Mary, uh, with, the, with the support she needs uh, in the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for a member missionary's sister, Linda, whose bladder cancer is back and who just got diagnosed with an aggressive skin cancer. Give her peace and the doctor's knowledge on how best to treat her going forward. We also pray for Grady, who will be taking care of his loving wife through all of this. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. Gracious God, we pray for our dear Emma Steele. May she have a light case of COVID and quickly return to healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for uh, Denise's great niece, Callie, for her newly diagnosed cardiac condition, that it be minor and treatable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray uh, for a foster great nephew for full recovery from his seizures, fever, and other symptoms. Restore him to good health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, I thank you, thank you that you continue to, to lift up future leaders of the church. Today I give thanks uh, for Sarah Krolak, who was ordained into the ministry of word and sacrament yesterday, and uh, for Kira Anderson, who will be ordained into the ministry of word and sacrament later this afternoon. Uh, empower them in their ministry so that your love may be proclaimed into the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
Gracious God, as we gather today, we gather uh, in a community uh, that has a number of folks who don't have a place to lay their heads. God, I ask that you continue to provide uh, this congregation and, and those agencies who, com- who help to combat homelessness in our community the strength uh, and, and courage to continue um, advocating for those who don't have a home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, as we gather here today, I think of those who are food insecure uh, in our uh, community of Rochester and in our world. Continue to use us as your people of hope uh, to combat food insecurity. Uh, we give thanks for Sarah Jurdy and her leadership in our, in our garden ministry, and we thank you for our, our partner, Revolutionary Earth, who provides food to those who are hungry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we lift our silent prayers to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, I ask that you continue to be with me um, as I continue to heal uh, from my most recent injury. Uh, God, I ask that you provide me with comfort of, of heart and mind uh, as, as things seem to continue to be more complicated uh, than was first imagined. Uh, continue to be with me, uh, provide me with, with peace and with patience and be with Karen and Tucker as they tolerate taking care of me yet again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We are going to continue with our communion liturgy. So if you're watching from home, I'm going to invite you to make sure that you have communion elements uh, around you so you can participate in God's meal of love and forgiveness. If you are in this space, Uh, You can experience communion two ways this morning. First, if you're not yet comfortable coming forward uh, to receive communion because of of concerns of COVID, there are prepackaged communion elements at the back of the room. I'd invite you to grab one of those uh, so you can participate in the meal. Uh, If you are going to come forward, I'll give you communion instructions at the end of our communion liturgy uh, this morning. So we're going to continue with the liturgy as it appears on the screen. Uh, This morning, I will play the role of pastor, and I invite you to play the role of people. So, um, people of God, people of life, we gather as a holy communion for a meal that has been shared countless times in countless places and in countless ways. The first time this meal was shared, Jesus was gathered around a table with a ragged collection of people, outcasts, betrayers, the power-hungry, the fragile, the lonely, and the lost. The first time the meal was celebrated, Jesus promised that it was for all time, that whenever the bread was broken and the wine was poured, wherever the story was told around a table, he would be there. Today we remember the story as it's been told a thousand times over. We eat the bread and we drink the wine, and we affirm that we all belong at this table and that Jesus is here. So if we come to this table angry, let this bread and wine be our peace. If we come to this table betrayed, let this bread and wine be our grace. If we come to the table divided, let this bread and wine be our wholeness. If we come to the table in despair, let this bread and wine be our life. For this is a holy table with food to fill the hungry world and wine to quench thirsty hearts. Thanks be to God. When Jesus ate with friends, he took bread, And after blessing it, he broke it and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends, saying, Drink, this cup poured out for you and for all people is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. We remember Jesus' death and resurrection, our hope and our life. We break the bread and share the one cup. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We will commune by moving from the back of the worship space to the front, down the center aisle. I'm going to invite you to stop and uh, sanitize your hands, then pick up a communion cup. Come see me. I will uh, be distributing the bread this morning. Uh, if you prefer to have a gluten-free bread, I will also have that available. Just let me know. Then you'll make your way off to the sides where we'll have two communion servers uh, serving wine. I am, invite you to partake in God's meal there. Dispose of your used communion cups and make your way back to the uh, your seats down the side aisles. If you prefer to have grape juice uh, as part of your communion celebration today, we have that available as well. Uh, simply indicate that and, and uh, we will pour from the chalice with the red ribbon tied around. So first, I'd like to invite our musicians as well as our communion servers to make their way forward.
Jesus Christ strengthen you in his grace and in his peace. Amen. Uh, just a few words of announcements uh, as we conclude our time of worship here this morning. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for making People of Hope part of your Sunday morning uh, today. Thank you for those of you who are joining us online. Uh, just a reminder that we have another worship opportunity scheduled for tomorrow night. It's our last of our Journey Together events uh, where we're going to gather at 6 p.m. invite you to bring a picnic meal. Uh, then at 6.30 we'll gather for worship and after worship we'll have some time of fellowship as, as well as some educational opportunities as well. So love to have you join us here at People of Hope tomorrow night starting at 6 p.m. Um, as you come to the church building, uh, I know that some of you haven't been here for a while because you've been worshiping online. Uh, you'll notice our tiny pantry and you'll notice that our tiny pantry is almost always empty. And it's not for a lack of trying to keep it filled, it's because it's being utilized by members of uh, the Rochester community. So we really need your help to kind of continue to stock that tiny pantry as much as possible. So if you're coming to church, I invite you to bring a couple non-perishable items with you. Uh, you can stop by any time and fill the pantry yourself. Um, but it's been a really valuable ministry during these, uh, the, these, this past year and, a, year and a half to have that tiny pantry. I know that we're meeting uh, needs of the community. So I'm going to invite you to participate uh, with us in that work. Um, in the e-news this past week, both uh, registration forms for both learning time and confirmation went out. Uh, we're going to encourage you to fill out those registration forms as soon as possible so we can plan accordingly. Uh, learning time kickoff is going to be on Sunday, September 11th uh, at about 10.15 a.m. after worship uh, concludes that day. And then confirmation kickoff is uh, Wednesday, September 14th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, speaking of learning time, we are in uh, the process of recruiting some additional learning time teachers. So if you're interested in serving the church in that capacity, uh, I'm going to invite you to contact either Sarah Blackburn or Katie uh, Scouten to, to, to sign up and volunteer your time. Uh, it's a, the curriculum we're using this year is pretty easy uh, to utilize to teach Sunday school, so I encourage you uh, to participate in that ministry in, in that way. Um, if you've been to church again in the past few months, you will have noticed that some of our light bulbs are burnt out, not only in our worship space, but in our gathering space. Uh, we have reached a critical mass of light bulbs being burnt out that now we, we are going to replace most of the lights. Uh, and we wait for a while to do that because to do so, we have to rent a cherry picker to, uh, to change the lights because they're so high. So we are looking to do all that work before uh, that September 11th date. So if you are willing and able to come help change some light bulbs, please let me know. I have been barred from getting on the cherry picker myself. So uh, I need some people who aren't afraid to go up in the air um, because no one really wants to pay a workman's comp uh, uh, kind of thing. Uh, finally, we are collecting school supplies to be sent out for our Lutheran World Relief uh, project that we will do in later September. We pack school kits that are sent really all over the world uh, to meet the needs of those who have who have limited access to, to have their own school supplies. Uh, there's a list in the e-news of the supplies that we need. We were also partnering with our sister parish, Akamu Herza, to purchase some additional backpacks for those school supplies. I'm happy to report that, that this congregation has raised enough money to buy those additional bags from Akamu Herza, which not only helps our project, but really helps that, that um, community in El Salvador uh, meet some needs as well. So thank you for your generosity uh, in that as well. I think that's all the announcements I have this morning, so I'm going to invite you to please uh, thank you. Uh, a reminder of an announcement from the back of the room. Next Saturday, if you're looking for something to do, there's an event happening at Good Earth Village, which is our outdoor ministry um, for uh, the ELCA churches in this area, uh, called Good Stock where there, it's, a, it's essentially a music festival. So beginning, I can't remember, I think it's at 3 p.m. Uh, until later on in the evening, there'll be three different musical acts providing uh, music. One of them is uh, called A Sign Ahead. It's a group that I traditionally play bass for. Uh, instead, the better looking Doring man is going to be playing bass in my stead with that group. Uh, then uh, a, a local group called Six Mile Grove and then a nationally known uh, Christian singer named Johnny Diaz will be providing music that evening. 
There's going to be artisans who are selling things. There's going to be food trucks. The best part about it, other than the food and the arts that you might buy, is everything is free. So I'd encourage you, if you're looking for something to do next Saturday afternoon, drive out to Good Earth Village, which is located in Spring Valley. Bring a lawn chair, listen to some good music, and meet some new friends. So that's all being said. I invite you to please stand as you are able to join in singing our final song. Kids, if you want to grab a musical instrument to help play along, uh, that would be great. They're over to the side of the room. Receive the blessing. May the sun bring you new energy by day and the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries and may the breeze blow new strength into your being. May you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. With the help of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.